Hello and welcome back to the show, everyone. I have got some messages for you today. The energy is interesting. It's intense. I was just on the Embodied Goddess call. Amazing program, having so much fun. And we were talking about how, you know, we're all going through this big death and rebirth cycle. And there's this feeling of being tossed in the snow globe and it's just getting shaken up and you're like, where am I? And I think so many people are feeling really ungrounded right now and we are being pushed to learn how to surrender to that, how to surrender to the movement. And really what that is, is surrendering to the quantum. So this is really connected to embracing your psychic abilities and the new levels of your psychic abilities. I am seeing most light workers, light leaders, we are getting turned on to our next level of gifts. So no matter how powerful you already are, you are going to see new gifts come online or a deepening of gifts that you've already started to uncover. We are, and I want to say also a lot of these might be things that you have been resisting. A lot of things, these might be things that you really don't want to go deeper into or topics you have not wanted to dive into. It's often the stuff we resist the most that really has, you know, the most for us. And that's true in life in general, but it's really interesting what's happening as this is all shaking out and they're showing me the image of somebody getting tossed around. It's like being in space, right? Like being in space and somebody's trying to get grounded and find their footing and hold on to something. And the whole point is there's nothing to hold on to. You just have to surrender to it and let yourself flow. And can you find peace in just floating in outer space? And what most people don't realize is that's what it is to live a life of trust. That is what it is to live a life that is intuitively led. If you really want to manifest cool shit, if you really want to create cool things, if you really want to unlock your next level, so much of it is dress just as scary as it is thrilling, <laughs> to be honest. Like there, I feel like most of my life is I'm like, I'm so nervous about what's about to happen, but I just got to jump in. And that's what people are being shown right now. You know, it's this whole idea. And we've been talking about this in the, in the Harry Potter deep dive, but like people think they want to have their gifts turn on and it's okay. Well, do you realize what comes with that? And I feel like we should all turn on our psychic abilities and our spiritual gifts and we need to start utilizing those, but also realizing the different levels of responsibility and integrity that come with that. And it's really interesting for me to kind of just observe how people respond and what's going on. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have picked up on this, but I feel like when people don't feel grounded and when, they, when they're in that, I'm getting tossed in the snow globe, you can, you can really tell how regulated someone's nervous system is, how much they like themselves. Like that's when people start to sometimes project a lot of stuff, have a lot of negative things to say about people. Like it's when it all kind of comes out because, you know, we're stressed, we feel ungrounded. And so then we can kind of start getting upset and a lot of truths rise to the surface. <laughs> and that actually is a really valuable time for us to start to look at, well, like what's coming out of me right now? What's triggering me right now? I think that people are getting really triggered right now and our triggers teach us a lot, right? So there's actually a lot of good stuff that can come out of that, but it's interesting just to observe our level of comfort with being thrown out into the abyss. And that's something that we can look at within ourselves. I know this is something I, I get to look at <laughs> consistently and, and really look at grounding a little bit differently. Can I find that peace and comfort and home within within myself? But the other thing that's really coming up right now, and I'm just I'm just channeling what the guides are saying, <laughs> is like we are being forced to really look at where we are in integrity. And that has to do with authenticity. And there's a lot of because a lot of these shakeups are realigning us with, hey, this is actually what's authentic. This is actually where you're meant to go. And people are resisting it. And we're starting to realize, wait, all the stuff I did before, like I thought it was aligned, but I was so deep in the illusion or out of touch with my true self that it actually wasn't in alignment. I actually believed that myself. So it's sort of like, how can I describe that for them? 
let's say you thought that you believe something or you wanted something. And right now everything's getting shaken up in the snow globe and you're getting plopped onto a, the more aligned path that's actually resonant with your frequency. That's the better phrase. You're getting plop, plopped on the path that's actually resonant with your frequency right now. And that could be life changes. That could be conversations that are coming up, patterns that are coming up. We're being forced to look at all of the places that we haven't been fully integrity. And what that, that also includes is where I've been telling myself I believe one thing and I don't actually believe it. I'm not actually living it. Where I'm telling myself I really want one thing, but that's not actually what my soul wants, right? And that's like a genuine confusion for a lot of people where you're so on this one path and you're like, this is what I've been manifesting. This is what I desire. This is what I want my life to look like. And that's not going to get you where you want to go. And so the universe is like, ah, redirection, plopping you way over here. And you're in a situation that you don't think that you like initially. You're triggered by this person. You don't want to have these conversations. But then you get deeper into it and you're like, wait, why does this feel good? There's a really strong energy of kind of like embracing the weird. You know, it's kind of like they're showing me two people are dating. <laughs> they're showing me this is the scene. This is fun. They're showing me, they're showing me there's like some event and someone bumps into somebody at this event who is not their type. They think this person's kind of weird, like out there, strange, like this is weird. Um, that's this person's energy. It's their ego, their mind, because <laughs> it's not what they're used to. And we often push away what's unfamiliar immediately, but it's like, wait a sec. They start talking, they keep bumping into each other, and this person almost doesn't want to admit it to themselves, but they're kind of like interested in this, this person they think is weird <laughs> that they originally aren't really into. And then they end up getting together. That's, that's the, the trailer in my head that I just saw. It's that kind of energy in your life. Like may, maybe it's the thing that you're like, no, that's weird. That's too out there. I definitely don't want to do that. But like, why is it that you're so against it? Why, why is it? What's in there? What's in there for you? Right? We're getting called out. Where are we not in integrity? Where are we not being authentic? And through this are a lot of really valuable lessons. So one of the things that is really coming up is time. And what I really want to say today in this moment is timing does matter. <laughs> That might not be my tune in other messages, but the guides are basically saying this topic of time I'm excited about to, that they're going to keep bringing more things in, but this topic of time is really important. And for us to really look at our relationship with time, we talked about that on the last episode with the monarch being, and I've been thinking about that and I'm like, okay guys, bring in more because this is interesting stuff. It's really similar to what can open up when we start to tune into our relationship with money for sure. Money's a really powerful healer. So is time. And the, I'll say like the consciousness of time wants to talk to us more and work with us more. Playing with time in the sense of, so let me give you an example. I am obsessed with learning about people's routines. I'm obsessed with learning about people's morning routines, evening routines, their days, how do they schedule their days? And I've always been interested in this. I would like ask my teachers all these questions growing up. I would always ask people around me like, well, how do you like to start your morning? Well, what order do you do this in? Well, when do you do your homework? I would like always be obsessed with people's routines from a childhood. And then now as I'm as an adult, I always ask people these questions. And I know people are just like, why is she, what's, what is this deal? Because there's always been this thing within me wanting to know, and I don't think I really understood why I knew until this bit came in around time, which is the, the thing done at the right time for you, uniquely in alignment for you, is how it's going to work. So you might feel like your entire life is out of alignment, or you feel like you're exhausted, or things aren't working, things aren't flowing. And I think the factor that is less talked about is, is the timing incorrect? And so this is a very logistic thing. It's like, and this is individualized. And so this really goes into 
this is kind of like like chronotypes with sleeping, right? If you if you are genetically designed, if your body's circadian rhythm is set up so that you're a night owl, like you're just supposed to be a night owl because there are people that have that genetic predisposition, like that's in their genes. And you can look up, you know, the science on chronotypes. There's a lot of really incredible scientists and researchers who and doctors who talk about all this. I'm just using this as an example. Let's say you are genetically a night owl and you try and sleep every night, like from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Like you're getting those kind of hours of sleep and you're going to always, you always feel exhausted and you feel like no matter how much sleep I get, I'm still tired because you're sleeping at the wrong times for you. And this is the same thing with exercise. So look, not everybody's meant to be a morning exerciser. Similarly, not everybody does well when they're a nighttime exerciser. And it might not be the workout that's not working for you. Maybe it's the time of day that you're doing it, which I think is not a very much looked at issue. I don't know what it is about podcasting recently, but I keep getting things in my eye. It's so weird. Like this has happened like multiple times. I think I got it. What kind of message is that? They just said, stop seeing with your eyes and see with your heart. (laughs) Do you want my eyes closed? No, but maybe sometimes. Okay, maybe a little more. I don't tend, they're saying, I'm like, are you doing that because you want my eyes? I'd never get things in my eyes except when I'm on podcasts. This makes no sense. And they're saying they want my eyes closed more? Interesting. I don't close my eyes because I don't need to. (laughs) And that was something early on in my uh, training with different mentors, everybody always said like, don't close your eyes, keep your eyes open. I don't, I don't, I don't close my eyes to like, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> working through things. So doing things at the wrong time might feel like it's totally incorrect for your body. So maybe you think like, oh, that workout really doesn't work for me, but was it the workout or was it the time of day? And it's the same thing even with your creative endeavors. Like maybe you're trying to I don't know, launch your podcast or write your book or launch your business and you always try and work on it, I don't know, at 7 p.m., like after things have died down or you always try and wake up really early and work on it first thing before you go and do your day job, whatever. And it's just feeling hard. It's feeling like it's not working. Maybe you're putting out things and it's not latching on. It could literally be the timing of it. Because timing is an important thing and we're going to know the timing based on our intuition. What's feeling good? When is it naturally flowing through? This is really similar to how I channel books. Like if I tried to decide, so I know the next book I'm going to channel. I don't know when. I haven't gotten the directive when. I, I, they tell me. They said December or March. Ugh. <laughs> well, we'll find out. December or March. Anyway, I don't know. They will tell me when I'm going to channel the next book. And if I was like, you know what? I want to channel it sooner rather than later. I have a couple of free weekends. So I'm going to go, I'm just going to channel it end of July. And I tried to do that. Nothing would come through. It would feel so hard. It would feel clunky. It wouldn't be the genuine transmission. It just wouldn't work. But you're channeling everything in your life. <laughs> you are when it's authentic and, and genuine that's that's your own type of channeling right I'm talking about different types of channeling here but so if you're trying to force something to happen to move through your body to come through with inspiration creatively cr- creatively Cre- creatively what Cre- creatively <laughs> okay <laughs> creatively then You've got to align with the timing that works best for you. So this is why it's important to kind of play with the scheduling of your days, to play with the scheduling of your weeks. And you're going to notice that time expands or contracts according to whether or not you're doing things at the right time. So this does not mean the other factors don't matter of the being in alignment, you know, whatever, all that. But like part of the alignment is the timing. And so... You know, what's so funny is I'll take something really simple. I was thinking about uh, just like getting dressed and ready for my day. And I've noticed that when I 
try and get dressed like at like later times of day it just seems to take me longer like i'm doing the exact same thing exact same thing but it takes me a little bit longer and then if i'm going if i'm doing it earlier i'm like way faster because the portal is open and so the time is actually expanding and i can do more in that time period and these are all things that we can start to play with i mean imagine if every single thing that you did in a day was optimized for when the portal was open. So like I talk about these portals being open for, hey, it's a good time for me to channel a book, but every single thing you do in a day has its own aligned portal timing. And this is where you can actually like tap into the consciousness of that thing, uh, check in with your body and ask like, what's the aligned timing? And even, you know, play with that. I mean, play with your pendulum, get a quartz pendulum, right? And ask yes or no, what is this a good time? Uh, but th there's a lot of, and because, our bodies are changing a lot. So there's a lot of circadian rhythm swaps going on and, and the right timing for you where the portal is open and easy and time is actually expanding. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think a lot of us are feeling limited by time and that is forcing us to start to play with time in a very different way, understand time in a very different way, which is cool. Like, and that's the thing I think about most things in my life that I've learned a lot of, of random shit about that other people don't know about, like where I've like really dove in and people are like, how do you know this? I'm like, well, this happened and I basically had no choice other than to figure this shit out. <laughs> and that's what's happening for a lot of people right now. Like we're getting to the point of whatever in your life of, I have no choice other than to figure this shit out. <laughs> so time is one of those things. I know for me, I've been pushed to this where I have just so much that I really want to work on, bring through, like I'm getting pumped, I'm getting excited. And I'm like, well, how am I gonna fit this all into the day? And they're like, get creative, find the portals. Like, what do you know about expanding time? Uh, and this is also related to our bodies and, and our health. Like that is so, so important for expanding time and like taking a step back and getting to a space where our bodies can feel aligned and balanced and our nervous systems feel good and, you know, are fueling ourselves in a really aligned way. That just allows the entire like, machine to operate optimally and we're more efficient we're faster and a lot of times we're just slower at things if our brains aren't clear or if our bodies are exhausted things like that right so that's all stuff that's being um invited up for us to look at do you have anything else on time yes i'm seeing time as an energy right now um and it's showing itself as like this watch, like this, like a pocket watch, really beautiful pocket watch with like, it's like an etheric pocket, pocket watch with all these really pretty color streams that are like white and blue and purple around it. Um, okay. So time, time right now doesn't have a voice for me. I'm just, it's visual. So, okay. What else do you want us to know? Okay. So it's turned into like a crayon that has drawn on a piece of paper what looks like a very jumbled bit of yarn you know just like scribbles in all of these circles um you okay it's saying like we you might be experiencing time loops right now when you're in the same energy and when you're not conscious or intentional it's like instead of experiencing time like forward motion you're in these time loops and you'll feel like it's forward motion because we experience linear time and it's like on the clock, but what you're really doing are experiencing these time loops. And a lot of people might experience more glitches in the matrix. You can also, it's saying we can use that to our advantage if you want a time loop, right? So basically like choosing a track within the frequency of time and saying, I want to, I want to loop this. <laughs> I want to loop this so that I could maybe do like, <sighs> how that's a really quantum concept. How can you describe that in an easier way? Cause I'm, th it's like, okay, from 11, from 11 to 1105, I want to loop this frequency multiple times so I can do what I would do from 11 to 11, 15 within 11 to 1105. Like I can triple it cause I'm running this loop. Um, So you, you pick an energy. So, so time right now is likening this to meditation. 
you know, I was like, you know, when you're meditating and, or, you know, whatever you're doing, <laughs> astral traveling, it, it just, it's the exact same thing. Actually, it's very simple. You're meditating, you're astral traveling, whatever. And I know when I'm meditating or talking to the guides or astral traveling, talking, whatever, it, I feel like I, it's been like two hours. I can do like two hours worth of work in five minutes and I look at the time I'm like whoa it was only five minutes like so much happened because I just kind of removed myself um outside of that space and that's where if we just start to work on the quantum a bit like if you're visioning things so let's say you're brainstorming something it's getting more effective if you actually like go into meditation frequency and then brainstorm from there because you could do like five hours of brainstorming maybe within 10 minutes Ooh. love that um okay what else what else can you tell us um it's saying i'm not working against you i'm showing you what's working and what's not and i'm also showing you what you like and what, what you want, what you want more of so even when you experience time contracting like i can't believe that went by so quickly oh i wish it was longer like you know when you just get in a vortex with somebody you have maybe you have like a great lunch lunch with somebody or and whatever you get caught up you're hanging out with your friends and you're like holy shit i didn't realize it had been four hours that's showing you something important that's showing you something really valuable about like this is where i want to be right so really recognizing like i mean time i want to say time is on our side i mean time is just a neutral energy right and it's it's just one experience but when we start to realize we can work outside of it then we can like dip our toe in here and dip our toe in elsewhere but with that you know that that's a big thing right now is like where you're halfway in and halfway out like if you're halfway in this 3d thing and halfway in this higher dimensional thing whatever we want to call it then it's going to feel like things aren't working like you've got to pick a lane and I think a lot of people are feeling that in, the, in their lives. It's like, I'm this way here and I'm this way there. And I feel like I'm straddling two lives. Like you've got to pick one. Um, and you've got to also, this is about aligning stories, time is saying. Like if you're saying over here, oh yeah, I believe X, Y, Z. And over here you believe the opposite. Like, yeah, I know time is going to support me. But over here I'm like, I never had enough time. Then it's kind of like the entire energy is stuck. So we're basically just clearing out any cognitive dissonance hmm. wow I didn't think I was going to talk about time today this much anything else that seems to be it that seems to be it for today okay <clears throat> but what I also want to talk about Okay, never mind. I was just seeing if time had 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 more to say. It was just very interesting. It's very interesting energy. Um, it reminds me of the little time thing in Loki on Disney Plus. Whatever. What I really wanted to talk about today were dragons. <laughs> uh, mostly just because like they're coming in um so strongly for a lot of people, and so especially when I when I'm I've been seeing this come through for a lot of my clients who aren't necessarily like super consciously spiritual, I'll say, you know, they're like, don't really do their own meditations and stuff. Uh, and so a, a lot of people who might consider themselves like more, I don't know, normal, whatever, <laughs> more mainstream are having a lot of really powerful activations and a lot of gifts turn online as well. And so dragons are coming up a lot for a lot of people. I'm sure a lot of you guys work with your dragons. If you don't already, then I would really encourage you to, because the the thing is like, you can call forward the consciousness of your dragons. We have dragon protectors. Notice the color, uh, notice the, you know, your dragon will have a name. You can ask for the name or maybe you can name it. What color is it? How big is it? Um, what is it there to help you with? What, what's the personality like? Like, they all have different personalities and 
this is connected to a few things. First of all, us kind of expanding our different energetic tools and way uh, and ways of receiving support and and energetic protection. Wow. Okay. Okay. So I basically have been putting the intention that I wanted to channel more about the support thing. Like why are so many people feeling unsupported? And part of it is because we go back to the image of somebody floating off in space in the abyss. And it's like, they, they're, they have an idea of what being supported feels like on earth, which is I'm supported when my feet are on the ground. Cause I can feel that. So then when they're out in the abyss, when they're just like in a different and they're in, when they're in space where there's no gravity, they're just feeling like they're not supported. And it's not that they're not supported. They're just not used to the, how support feels there because it feels and looks different. Do you understand that? <laughs> that metaphor? And that's what we're being called to like a new understanding of feeling supported of grounding and also leaning more into our energetic tools our energetic support and our energetic protection uh and so why i love this is because i just been saying like i want to channel about this support thing and how can we feel more supported and why do so many people not feel supported and i think there's a lot there but then the dragons started coming through really strongly and they were like okay talk about the dragons so you might have more people added to your dragon team. I basically, a couple days ago, was like talking to my dragons and they led me into this entirely other cave, this entire, this whole other cave with all of these dragons. Uh, and I was like, whoa. And they're like, yeah, these are all your dragons. I was like, I didn't know I had all these dragons. <laughs> so working with your dragons for protection. They're great for protection. They're great for clearing spaces. They're great for protecting spaces, calling them in, working with them. Like, you know, it's similar to working with Archangel Michael, but just a different, very different energy. They are fierce. They're ferocious. They're loving. They're, um, are protective, right? Like they're, they're protective and they'll help you with stuff. But this is also about kind of broadening, our relationship with the spirit realm. So I think people get really stuck on this concept of like spirit guides and can have this really limited view of what spirit guides mean. Uh, and I think that's a big reason why some people feel like they can't fully connect with them because they just have this really clear image of what their spirit guide is supposed to look like. But there are so many different types of energies and entities that want to help us. And one of the reasons why I wanted to change kind of the flow of the show is because I want a lot more space to be channeling a lot of these different energies because they've been coming in for me so strongly, you know, so it's not just your typical spirit guides. It's not just the ascended masters, the angels, the archangels, um, our ancestors. A lot of people right now, it's like, let's talk more to the ancestors and there are a lot of people who have crossed recently who are very active in supporting us right now. Like, th like they're close, but also like deep down the ancestral line, people that you probably don't even know that you haven't heard of. Um, and the soul line, the soul line, other incarnations of you, you are multidimensional. Other incarnations of you are trying to help you. Right. So looking like ancestors, soul family in other dimensions and other planets, uh, our galactic families, our, our soul lineage, the elementals, uh, the fairies, the sprites, the gnomes, animals, animal totems really strongly. A lot of animals for people, the, the mer people, um, elements themselves, water energy, fire, earth, air. There's just so, there's so much else like you can like everything has its own frequency frequency bands themselves sound 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 colors textures <laughs> there's a lot you know you talk about dragons um there's just a much broader view that the spirit realm wants us to take. So like you might feel like you're struggling to connect with a certain group or a certain being and it's because you're so set on it looking a certain way or it's like you're so set on connecting with the Pleiadians but the Pleiadians maybe aren't coming through for you right now. And so if you just open yourself up 
and explored other things, you might be like, oh, wait, but the Syrians really want to connect with me. Or one of these gazillion other types of species, of peoples, planets, whatever, that I've never heard of wants to come through. And that's been the, the thing. Like for me, I feel like I work actually a lot more with a lot of different groups that I've never heard anyone talk about. I'll Google it after I connect with them. And I'm like, this is nowhere on the internet. I can't find a book about it. Like, I, you know, it's just kind of hilarious that humans think that that I mean I don't know how many star groups people think there are I think like you know sometimes people are like yeah you know the 18 main groups it's like 18 and then I think on the high end it'll be like oh yeah there's like 45 groups and it's like you think there's only 45 really there's so many that we haven't even had contact with um and there's just so many different like (laughs) species and planets and galaxies and there's so much out there, right? And so there might be some, there might be a really soul resonant frequency wanting to support you that you haven't really fully opened yourself up to. The ancestors, it's a big, big one recently. And like animals, whether those are animals that we know now or animals that are more or stronger in other dimensions, in the etheric that have been here before, maybe left or or extinct now there's a lot um and i'm gonna be honest i'm a lot more interested in (laughs) topics and beings and things that like we haven't touched yet than than figuring out history like and so i don't i don't really like channel a lot about that and i was asking my guides about that and they're like it's because you're future oriented like um, that's just, I don't know. I just think there's a lot of misunderstandings there. <clears throat> I'm going to pull. New beginnings. Confusion. Joy, blessings, intuition. Currents of emotion. Uncontrolled feelings, I mean. There we go. Well, new beginnings are leading to confusion. I, I did a post, it's like you want, some, you're manifesting something and then you get, you know, everything shaken up in a jar and you're like, I'm so confused. What am I doing? And the universe is trying to align you with what you're manifesting. And then we have this emotional release. Uh, within the emotional release is, can I look at all parts of myself and love all parts of myself? Right. And there's this, there's this inner child thing that's really strong right now. Uh, because that's really how we connect in with our intuition uh, is really where a lot of people feel blocked with everything in their lives and especially spiritual abilities. But I see this as business with spiritual abilities. People are blocked like they they can get so far, but then they can't go deeper because they're not connected to their inner child. And I feel like really getting in touch with like your spirituality and these different types of beings and stuff like this is such a great way to connect back with your inner child because this is the stuff that you knew when you were a kid that you were connected with that you were drawn to. So what was it that you're that you were really into? What TV shows did you really like? What kind of stories did you really like? What myths and legends? What superheroes did you really like? Like getting in touch with that is going to lead you directly to the types of beings and energies that you're going to really resonate with on a spiritual level where you can find that connection. Maybe your favorite superhero is one of your spirit guides. Maybe there was someone like a badass person in history that you've always loved and admired. And that person is one of your guides is, or is a divine support that wants to come through for you right now. And I know a lot of people get very technical about spirit guides and boom. And like, there's a difference between guides that are with us most of our lives versus if they're just coming in to communicate. Yes, I get it. Like, I don't... <laughs> Uh, people always look for something to nitpick at and that's fine. I'm just talking about right now, there are a lot of energies that want to come in and communicate and share and support us and start to play with, if I could ask anyone or anything in the world, what should I do here? Or can you support me with this? Who or what would I ask? Would I ask the trees? Do I want to ask my favorite book character? Do I want to ask my favorite superhero? Is there this person like in history that I was always really resonant with? And I I love learning about them and I used to geek out over them. Maybe they want to come through. You know, I was thinking about like, I mean, my, like one of my favorite shows was Dragon Tales. That show was so good. That show was so good, honestly. (laughs) I actually, I actually watched it like 
maybe a year ago with some of my friends and I was like, this is hilarious. But it's like, there's a reason why that was my favorite show. Your inner child knows. So can you just start to play? And this is where visualizing and, and, and meditating beyond beyond just silencing your mind. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. Or like It all serves, right? It all serves for different reasons. But I think we really need new openings into our inner child because the block is because pe people are so serious. And so they're not in creative energy. The more you're connected with your inner child and play and your imagination, the easier it will be to work in the energetic realm. The easier it will be to turn on all of your gifts, right? But it, it's like, a lot of people, for example, I know everybody thinks they want to see more shit psychically, which is a whole other topic. But let's say you do. The reason why a lot of people are blocked from seeing psychically is because there's some deep part of their, this is just one of many reasons, there's some deep thing within them that thinks it's childish to see things like, oh, I don't want to use my imagination. I'm not going to make things up. They think it's childish. They think it's weird. I think it's crazy. Like there's some piece of them that thinks that like if you're just start to see random shit, you know, I mean, I remember I remember being in second grade and I saw a leprechaun. It was right next to my friend. Mind you, remember, I see holograms and I see everything outside of me. And when I was younger, a lot of the, the denser beings like weren't. They didn't look as hologrammy as like Master Melchizedek was like this, you know, electric white and blue, like bearded man who clearly wasn't human. Like I was like, I know for sure if I tried to put my hand through you, you're not solid. But there were, you know, denser beings, um, like more connected with the elements that didn't actually look like a hologram that looked very real for me. Right. And I remember saying, I remember like saying this to my friends and they were like, um, and they started laughing at me. Oh my God. Do you think that I let myself see shit like that after that? Because you're so open and powerful as a kid. The second you're like, oh my God, I can't. I'm a re I'm, I'm rejected if I do that. I was going to say I'm a reject if I do that. <laughs> I, I'm rejected. Like that was a story I told myself in my head when I was, how, however old you are when you're in second grade, right? For that split second, like I'm going to be rejected. So then if that, if there's that deep part of your inner child that feels like, you know, I'm going to get in trouble or I'm going to be made fun of, or I'm going to be rejected, I'm going to be ostracized. Then are you really going to let yourself go there as an adult? You know what I'll say, what I have seen working with adults in a lot of different capacities is that's always the limit is like, there's a limit to where people aren't, are afraid to go further because whether it's emotionally or with their psychic abilities or with receiving, with playing, like this inner child thing is, is the portal to your magic, but there's a limit to it where there's a story in their head of like, now nah, I'm weird. That's not cool. Like there's a lot of image stuff. A lot of adults have a lot of image stuff. <laughs> uh, and you know, if you bump up against that, it's like, okay, well then that's also your block to seeing more. I have to be willing to use my imagination and embrace my imagination because it's the same muscle as my third eye. So anyway, what do my dragons want to say? You know what's funny about dragons and all guides? So you might get a name, but then also, and sometimes their names are things we're like, wow, I could never make that up. Like, and then sometimes they give you a name and you're like, that's really your name? And it's like, yep. <laughs> uh, because I pro you probably named them when you were little, you know? Um, but there's this red one talking to me with like golden, what are those? Like, it's like got gold on its back. And I asked her what her name is and she said, fiery. She says she's my Aries dragon. Do I have a dragon for every zodiac? Oh, she says, yes. Why do I have a dragon for every zodiac? She says, because they protect and guide you in all of your forms. There's a fiery aspect of you in all of your forms as you connect with each of those like zodiac energies, right? We, we all have all of it in us. 
some just more prominent than others. Um, and I, <laughs> part of what I'm here to do is to really express my multidimensionality. And this is part of me having like multiple birth charts. Like if I, if I'm, if I was gonna, you know, look up or like watch one of my energy updates for the Zodiac signs, literally all of them would apply to me. Cause if I'm like, Oh, my sun, moon rising and Venus, I'm going to look up. It's like, that's basically all of them. Okay. Interesting. So how can people call you forward? She says, just call forward your dragons that are here for that are of unconditional love and here for your divine protection and guidance and open yourself, open yourself up to receiving that protection. We are only going to come if you call us. And if you're also ready to wield your power, is that so? <laughs> is that so? Because they are very powerful protectors. She's saying that there's other forms of energy protection that are child play. And this is like, these are the big guns, essentially. Okay, that makes sense. Um, what else can we, what else can people use you for? Transportation in the astral. What else? Soul memory unlocking. Information. Dragons carry protection or carry codes and she's showing blowing um fire out of her mouth and there's an image in the fire but then also I'm seeing myself touch her body and I'm getting like an activation of information she's saying that a lot of people aren't connecting with a lot of these more powerful energetic beings like because they're afraid of potency you know, because they're like only really want to connect with the like, you know, if I, <laughs> okay. She's saying a lot of people are only energetically available for communicating. And I get it. It's like, I feel like there are levels for me, you know, with my intuition, like first really connecting with energies that I knew for sure were like loving and gentle and kind. And there's kind of this, not that they're, that they're not, but when you're talking to your spirit guides that have been with you for, you know, forever, like there's this softness, this warmth, this comfort when you're, when you're talking to the angels or the archangels, like there's, um, just kind of this softness and it's almost like what people are expecting versus, you know, the beings that have a bit more of a personality and they're spicier and they're fierce and they have, you know, kind of more things going on, uh, doesn't always come through immediately for people because of what they want to access and what they don't. But it's interesting how, <laughs> like if you're, you know, a lot of people now are like, yeah, I talk to my spirit guides. I want to talk to my spirit guides. And it's like, okay, well then the idea of connecting, you know, with, with your dragons, with, with the elements, with the fairies, with the trees, like, um, with all the sea creatures, the different sea beings, like all the stuff in myth and legends, how is that any different? It's the exact same thing. Uh, and there's a lot of support that wants to come through for us right now. And this comes back to the support piece. Like there's a lot of divine support that wants to come through that we're maybe not just, in, we're not intentionally connecting with yet. Um, okay. Anything else? Um, as she's saying, as you, like raise your vibration and become more powerful yourself in terms of like really tapping into your intuition and you're really clear. Like this is the thing when you're really clear, people can't bullshit you. That's, that's, that's the thing, right? When you're, when your third eye is open, when you are intuitive and when you trust yourself, people can't bullshit you. A lot of people are, I'll just say like, they're afraid of me because they know they can't lie to me. And a lot of people are used to lying. They might not think it's lying, but it's like half truths or it's, I'm putting up a facade. And a lot of people who spend their whole lives putting up a facade, they will run away from someone who is intuitive because it's like, oh my God. And they won't even consciously know why. Sometimes they do. Well, people who know me typically do. And I'm like, I know why you won't look me in the eye. I know why you don't want to talk to me because you're, you live your entire life with this mask on, with this facade on. And like, I see right through it. Right. But people, and, but 
whether or not people are conscious of that, <laughs> they will feel this energy of like, I feel like this person can see right through my bullshit. Even people who don't realize they are in their bullshit. <laughs> Look, we all have bullshit we're in that we don't see. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, you know, it's part of it. That's why we have mirrors. We have each other to be like, oh shit, I didn't see that blind spot, right? So <clears throat> um, she's saying that the more you're in your power, like in your potency, in your gifts and and you see truth, right? Like everything ramps up and including like the different energy tools I use and the beings I work with and how I'm um, protecting and supporting my field. And like, it, we are responsible for our energy fields. We are. I mean, I know a lot of people don't think energy protection is like important or good or whatever. I just, that's not my opinion. Um, like it's about pro protecting my field. And some people, I guess, have a negative association with that wor word. I don't think of that as like from a place of fear or if it's from a place of fear, then yeah, that's the problem. But it's like, Hey, I have my energy field. I have my home. Like I'm responsible for this. Like I'm going to take care of it, you know? So what am I going to do to make sure like we're stable, we're secure, we're grounded. Like, um, I'm not just going to leave my front door open all the time for anybody who wants to come in. I'm not <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, and that's not, that's not that certain people like, you know, it's not a judgment on other people. It's just like, I know my energy and I, I, you know, know if I want to interact with people or not today. So I'm going to decide that. <laughs> so, yeah. So she's basically saying just like new, not even new tools. Yes, new tools are coming in, but even just ancient, ancient tools really, or tools that you've worked with on a soul level in other incarnations across other lifetimes, shit that, that you've mastered things that you have mastered, beings you've worked with, like soul connections, they're going to come online really strongly for you to utilize in this life, you know? So it's like maybe in another lifetime you worked really strongly with animals or maybe in another lifetime um, you, I don't know, we're working on some cool technology, sciencey project and suddenly all of that's going to come in right now. You're going to get really interested in that or there's going to be opportunities in that direction or um, certain people or guides from that incarnation might come forward for you. You know, and that includes people like in other incarnations and other realities, friends of yours, or people who supported you there in the physical can be stepping forward with information for you now as guides. Um, and they're saying it's interesting because it's like, it is fascinating to me a lot of people who are crossing right now are either like quickly like moving out, moving through. They're like some, they're gone. They're like not gone, gone, but like somewhere else. Like, and other people are like kind of moving through the whole process post, you know, ascension quickly and then coming back in really strongly. Like it's not always like, it's always like that. I feel like it's all, it's usually more like of an in-between between those two things and they're saying there's a like quicker turnaround time it's a like quicker turnaround things are moving really quickly times are shifting really quickly um and there's a really big new template that's a, trying to get anchored in right now so they're they're trying to energetically prepare us i am feeling like i'm getting that a lot of people's lives are literally going to look like radically radically different in December, by December, write in your journal everything in your life right now. What has your life been like? What do you like? What do you not like? What are you doing? What are you interested in? What are you up to? What's going on? And really, like, there's kind of this transition point right now, but I mean, over the last four or five months, what's been going on? And then literally mark this page and come back to it mid December, December 15th. I'm telling you. Okay, anything else from my fiery dragon? <laughs> she said, we respect you when you're not scared. If you want to, you know, we know what I'm going to rewatch. I'm going to rewatch how to, how to Train a Dragon. Great film. That's interesting. She's like, we, we respect you and we will support you when you're not afraid. 
And that's the thing. How, how do you think you're going to move energy, work with things if you're afraid? It's not going to work. All right. That's it for today. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let me know what this brings up for you. Have you connected with your dragons? Are you working with your dragons? They're great. So much fun. Let me know if you know your dragon, what color, what's, what's its name. Let's play with it. Uh, hit the thumbs up button if you're watching on YouTube. It means a lot to me. And if you're not already subscribed on YouTube and or the podcast, be sure to hit the subscribe button because that means that you won't miss a future update and it helps me connect in with your energy. When I'm, when I'm tapping in, I'm connecting in. Like I don't, I'm not reading for the main, I'm not reading for the mainstream. When I, like the energy I'm tuning into is not for the mainstream. It's, I specifically tune into like the community of people who are here. So that also makes it like, that gets you in that bubble <laughs> basically of like, Hey, this is all the people I'm tuning into the collective energy for. And I appreciate the support. I appreciate all the shares, all of the feedback. Um, just having fun with y'all. All right. So thanks again for tuning in. That's going to be it for today. And I will chat with you again next time.